Aloha and welcome to Connection to the Cosmos with your host, me, Dr. Lisa Thompson, where I have out of this world conversations with extraordinary people. Today, I am excited to have on Chris Ashley and you're just going to love her. So I'll bring her on in just a moment. First, a couple of announcements. If you are coming to Hawaii, specifically to the Big Island, come on one of my Big Island UFO tours where you will see the night sky in a whole new way using my advanced generation three military night vision goggles. And for more information on the tours, visit BigIslandUFOTours.com. And if you still have not grabbed my free 20-minute meditative journey to meet your galactic family and guides, make sure you get that on my website, MysticManta.com or DrLisaJThompson.com. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on Chris. Hello, Chris. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I can't wait to uh, dive in because you and I, we have a lot of um, parallels in our lives and I read your book. And so let me tell people all about you. So Chris Ashley is a coach, author, and speaker who has spent the past two decades immersed in the research, spiritual teachings, and practices she shares. Her book, Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality, has received endorsements from three experts from the film The Secret, Anita Morjani, John Gray, and many others in the spiritual and personal development space. For more information on Chris's coaching online courses, events, and more, visit chrisashley.net. Well, so, okay, before we get into your book, because your book is extremely well-written, and yeah, you, you have some major endorsements for it. Pretty impressive. Yeah. I, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I, we'll, we'll talk about that, but um, I would love for you to just share your background, like how do you grow up, spiritual, religious, something else, so we know how you got into the work that you're doing. Yeah, so I grew up not at all in a religious household, and I'm going to tell you my origin story too, because I think I think people will relate to it. Uh, so I grew up not in a religious household. In fact, when I got married, my dad told me if he heard the word God mentioned in my wedding, he wasn't going to pay for it. So, but my, my, my dad had a Jewish family. My mom had a Catholic family and neither of them uh, were particularly religious. I had never attended uh, a church ceremony. I don't even know what they're called or temple or anything like that, except for weddings, funerals, things like that. Um, so my, my story starts like I imagine a lot of your guests do. Uh, and anyone who's on this healing journey, this path to help others with their own trauma. So my story is when I was age 12, I was sexually abused by a family member for four years. Mm. And my very large, tight-knit, Italian, in each other's face extended family, when they found out about what happened, uh, over half of them disowned me. And holidays, yeah. So holidays became divided. The, my parents and I would have to take afternoons at Christmas. The family of my abuser would take mornings. Family members who had been like, second mothers to me were calling me and telling me they no longer loved me and I wasn't their family anymore. So as you can imagine, this left me with all of these negative emotions like anger and guilt that as a young adolescent, I didn't know how to cope with. You know, most adults don't know how to cope with those types of emotions. No. So yeah, so it left me with severe PTSD. I was getting in trouble in school. I was, I was cutting, I was doing drugs. I was just in this downward spiral. And then everything changed when someone handed me a book. It was, it's, it's called The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life. I'm wondering if you've heard of it because I know we're on the same path. And Actually, that was one because you do reference that in your book. And that is a book I have not heard of before. Oh, so. you would love it because I see you're into all the ET stuff. You would love it. You would really, really love it. Uh, so, so someone handed me this book. And I, I remember as I flipped the pages, it hit me so hard that, wow, this finally feels like the truth. Hmm. And I like to say that I was like a sleeper agent, right? Something inside of me just woke up. And so when I finished that book, I started reaching for more. And I started devouring every metaphysical, spiritual, new age, personal development book I could get my hands on. And I, I just became insatiable. Like I wanted more, I needed more. I was just hooked. And my life became one big quest to learn, grow, heal, expand. And I was started studying under all these teachers. I was attending all these workshops. I was reading. I was, I was trying all these healing modalities. And I didn't know it at the time, but I was doing all that hard inner work. Mm -hmm. But I just, it just felt so good. And I, my mind was just being expanded. 
And so my life started to change. But as my life started to change for the better, my mother began to get worse. So her family had been ripped down the seams. And she didn't have all these healing modalities and these teachers and teachings like I did. Yeah. And it started to manifest as physical illness for her. Mm-hmm. She developed cancer. She developed uh, hepatitis and also all of these really weird afflictions that her doctors at Northwestern couldn't even explain. And so they did what a lot of uh, Western doctors do. is They started giving her pills. Mm-hmm. And then they started giving her the pills for the side effects of those pills. And then they were just throwing anything at the wall, hoping something would stick. And as a result, she slept for all but a few hours of daylight. She was falling down all the time. She was forgetting conversations we'd had just the day prior. And this lasted for almost 15 years, over 10 years, while I had this compounded guilt, right, that I had destroyed my family and broken my mother. Uh, But of course, everything happens for a reason, right? So I like to say my mother was my biggest teacher. Uh For every step, I watched her take deeper into depression and illness. I climbed in the other direction out of that tunnel because I was seeing what happened to a human body and spirit when they go down that path. Mm -hmm. And then I saw what happened to my own body and spirit as I decided to change my mind about the nature of reality and about life. And I made a promise to myself I would always prioritize my physical, mental, emotional health. And I've kept that promise to this day. And I know that was a very long-winded answer to your yeah. question, but thank you for asking it. Quite, um, number one, I just, like the whole thing of the sexual abuse splitting your family apart and then being mad at you for being the one having it done too. I mean, so what, do you know what the mindset was on that? from their perspective, like why they were punishing you for this? You know, I think everyone just does the best that they can with the tools they have available at the time. And I don't know that they were necessarily blaming me. I think that it was people, people were just, I don't know, their reality was being threatened, right? And they were, they were just reacting. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've, I've forgiven every single person involved since. It, obviously, it's not triggering for me to talk about it all. Um, right. Because you know, I go on a lot of these shows, like I was telling you before, and there's, there's kind of two camps of podcast interviewers. And the first, like yourself, you, you know that there's, that this is just, the, the trauma is just a catalyst, right, to growth, to spiritual awakening, and that there's so much more beyond that story And I know you and I are going to have these amazing conversations today. And then there's a second camp where they just get so honed in on the trauma. It's like all they want to talk about for the hour. And it's like, well, the trauma was a catalyst. Like we choose life events before we're incarnated. Yes. It was meant to happen. It was, it's part of my story, part of my journey. Well, no, and I appreciate that very much because um, my mother, she was sexually abused by her father for five years. Um, when she was a child. And even though she was in these spiritual kind of teachings, things, she was understanding the things that you and I know, she hit a wall and still like, you know, years, years and years and years later, hasn't been able to do the forgiveness piece and do the things. And so, and her health has, you know, been like your mom's, like she cancer and heart disease and all the bad things like that. And so, you know, so you are a beautiful representation of what I do feel like when things that are supposedly are bad happen to us, we have, we have a choice on how we want to move forward. Right. And for me, I choose to grow and evolve and learn and, you know, gain the wisdom. And so I appreciate your journey. And so thank you for being that inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. And I couldn't agree more. We always have a choice. We can forgive and grow and heal and get better. We can fall into unconsciousness and anger and hatred and become bitter and we become sick. Right. And it's people think I'm so crazy for saying this, but at this point, I welcome challenges in my life. I welcome adversity because I know on the other side of that is major growth. Right. Right. So it's just that flipping mindset, that flipping perspective. Yeah. Well, so, okay, so you read that book and then you were diving in. So when did you decide like you're going to do this and coach other people and write a book and all all of that stuff? Yeah, it was a long time later. It was it was two decades later. Um, I 
I had created the life of my dreams. You know, I had that perfect husband. I had healed anything that needed healing. I had, you know, I had great careers with paychecks that I loved. And I decided it was time to give back. I wanted to help other people. I wanted to share what I'd learned. So I took a life coach training because I figured that would be the best path. And I took it with Mary Morrissey, who was one of only three people mentored directly by the late, great Bob Proctor. And she, she actually ordained his whole funeral, if you, ever, if you watched it on YouTube. And I took, I took everything that I had learned over the last two decades from all these various teachers and healing modalities. And I took what I learned from Mary and I kind of picked the best pieces out and I created my own system. And from that, I wrote a book and started my coaching just a few years ago. Okay. Well, so, and, you know, in the book, you're, you do give credit to some of the teachers that you were learning under, or at least reading their books. And so one of the ones that stood out for me, um, who I've been a fan of since the late nineties is Dr. Bruce Lipton. Yeah. And so when you started understanding his work, what did that do for your life? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I discovered him pretty late in my spiritual journey. Right. And I actually just met him in person and I was able to give him a copy of my book, which was pretty cool. Nice. Um, he's, he's a very kind man. Yes. Uh, so yeah, you know, I met him pretty late. So by the time I read his work, I, I, ha- I was pretty familiar. But what I love, what I love about what he does and what other people like Joe Dispenza do is they back this all up with science. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's so easy for people to just dismiss this stuff as woo woo, but it's, it is science backed. It's backed by quantum physics. It's backed by epigenetics and the epigenetic component is what I really took from Bruce Lipton's work. Yeah. And yeah. So I I think that's where he had the greatest influence on me, you know, and, and I love just like his descriptions of like an atom and, you know, how it's just energy. And when you look at it under a microscope, you see nothing. It's just a physical void because it's just this swirling vortex of invisible energy. So all the science parts are what I really got inspired by from Bruce. Okay. Well, and as a former scientist myself, okay. when I was, I, I was teaching, um, you know, at the college level and I was teaching my biology students his work at, on the side because of course it wasn't in the textbook back 23 years ago. <laughs> and, and my students were just like, um, this doesn't make any sense. And this isn't real. And I'm like, just you wait in 20 to 25 years, it will be in your textbooks and it will be mainstream. And so here we are now where finally, you know, it is being taken seriously. Yeah. So, yeah. That's really cool. I love that story. Yeah. So I also, I've always been a fan of the science underlying the woo woo. Um, However, I do know as a scientist too, that we don't still have all the tools and and ways to do these experiments in the way that we will, you know, at some point when we're even more advanced. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's when we're going to win over everyone else. (laughs) (laughs) So, well, okay. So you mentioned that you were basically manifesting your most perfect life. So what kinds of tools and modalities were you put implementing that maybe you, you can share with the audience and, and inspire them to buy the book? Definitely buy the book. It's on Amazon. <laughs> change your mind to change your reality. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. You know, mm-hmm. it's interesting. So the book is kind of two parts. And what I teach is kind of two parts. It's it's that one side, it's it's how to manifest, right? How to use the law of attraction, how to use the quantum field to your advantage and all those different tools and, you know, things like visualization and journaling and meditation and self-hypnosis to, to achieve that dream life. But at the same time, it's all about, it's also about removing the things that block you from, from manifesting, from the law of attraction working. And I, that tends to be what I focus the most on with people because so many people come to me as like the last resort, right? They've, they've worked with other teachers that are just teaching the law of attraction. And, you know, so many people teach it like it's this genie in a bottle, right? You just like tell the universe what you want. You like lean back, kick your feet up, and then it just delivers. And it's not, it doesn't really work like that. There's so many things that can block it. So things like our subconscious programming, most of which happens before the age of seven, right? Our belief systems, 
that again get programmed by the adults we grew up around, cultural conditioning, the kids who made fun of you on the playground, and then repressed emotions is a big one. Because if you're if you're holding on to things like anger or hatred or guilt or shame or blaming other people, placing judgment on other people, all of that seeps into your manifesting, right? And you're going to manifest more things that make you feel that way. And then the other big one that we already kind of touched on is forgiveness, right? Because when you're holding grudges, that's that's poison. And we've seen it with both our mothers, right? Like that right. that there's that great Buddhist quote, right? Holding on to anger is like holding on to a hot coal with the intention of throwing it at someone else. You're the one who gets burned. So it, it just hurts you. So all of these things can block you from manifesting. They can seep into your manifesting. They can cause disease. They can cause pain. So it's, it's about equal parts clearing that road so then you can really get your dream life. Okay. And so from the clients that you work with, what are some signs? Because some people, I, I've noticed, some people don't even realize that they are blocked or have limitations or have this programming that's running and creating their life and maybe not the way that they are hoping it to be created. Yeah. So if people are listening, watching to this, what are some signs maybe that they might themselves be blocked? Yeah, well, so unfortunately, most people have gone through some sort of, if not traumatic event, then something that's causing debilitating stress in their life, right? So just the idea of thinking about that, right, can can cause you to feel the emotions that you felt in that time. And that makes your body produce the same chemistry, right? Like we were just talking about the science of it. So you're producing that same cortisol, that same adrenaline. Your body's reliving that event over and over and over again. And, yeah. you know, it, it's all about changing your belief system, changing your thinking, because what is it? 70 to 90% of people's thoughts are negative and repetitive, according to a psychologist. Yeah. And you know, most people are focusing on what they don't want. They're focusing on their aches and pains. They're focusing on that terrible thing that happened years ago or decades ago or a lifetime ago. They're, they're gossiping about their neighbors. Like you can't say you want world peace and be like fighting with your coworkers, right? It just, you have to embody it. So, you know, I think everyone has a little bit of work to do in that. In that. Yeah. I mean, we, we are all human. Yeah. So it's, you know, um, being, I think, becoming more aware of what those thoughts are. Yeah. And yeah. And so if someone does have illness in the body, um, okay, well, let's figure out what's the root cause of that, right? right? Because it generally stems from some emotional thing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, um, so when, when people come to you and they have these blockages, are there specific modalities that you're trained in that you help remove those blockages? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a few different things from meditations to journaling to, I mean, when it comes to re repressed emotions, it's just about feeling your emotions, right? So mm -hmm. there's certain um, physical modalities that will help you exhaust your body and mind so that you can go into your emotions so that you can have that catharsis, right? So you can feel things. Um, I mean, honestly, even things like primal screaming are great. Like I love screaming. Um, you know, it's, it's just about the person, right? So there's, there's lots of different things that I pull from, but, um, yeah, it's, it's about, like you said, becoming aware, noticing what you're noticing and being able to feel those things so that you can let them go. So they're not going to hold you back anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then once... Typically, um, if a client's coming to you, how long do they generally coach with you? Is it like one session and they're good or is it a longer process or does it depend? Yeah. So I have, I have a few different ways that people work with me. I have a pre-recorded course. I have a group coaching that meets weekly. And then I also have one-on-one -on -one clients. So it just depends. And it's funny, like I, I sell the group course through um, – a free workshop that I do every week. And I always have people be like, okay, what if I don't have time? It's going to take me a long time. Like, is this still going to work? And the same thing always happens. Like as they start going through the program, it's, it's like, it lays a foundation, right? It's like one module builds on top of the next. 
and things start changing so quickly, right? Synchronicities start happening. They start noticing different things. Like they're starting to manifest even just little things and they end up breezing through it because they get so excited, right? It creates this cumulative snowball effect. So the, when people do the group coaching and the, the online course, they have that for life. The one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do 10 sessions at a time. Okay. Yeah. So I am curious because you do mention some really big names of people endorsing your book and all of that. Yeah. So how did that come about manifesting? I, I, you just nailed it. And, it, you know, so many people have asked that. And I'm like, okay, I have, I have two answers to that question. The first, did it just get dark? That's weird. Um, the first is that I manifested it. And the uh -huh. second is I just asked. You know, I reached out to Anita Morjani and I reached out to Marcy Shimoff and I reached out to Michael Beckwith and I'm like, hey, would you read my book? And if you like it and you feel called to, would you write up a little blurb for the back cover? And they all said yes. And then they all read it and then they all liked it. And they all endorsed it. And it was, I mean, I was, I was, I don't know. I, it was like so shocking and so humbling. And I don't know. I'm just so touched because these are, these are people that I've looked up to for so long and to have them say such nice things about my book was really special. Well, right. Well, the, okay. So that's interesting that you, you just asked, like, yeah. and I think um, a lot of people, they automatically go through some self doubt or worthiness issues and don't ask for what they want, right? Or don't feel like, okay, I'm worthy enough to receive that. And, or they're afraid of being turned down or, you know, whatever it is. So that is, I think, a beautiful message right there. Ask for what you want. <laughs> I literally just created like a little TikTok video about exactly that, like half an hour ago. Okay. You know, it's, like, it's like, if you, if you don't ask, the, the answer is always going to be no. And if yeah. you don't take steps towards the life of your dreams, towards what you want, you're going to stay where you are. You know, like yeah. in order to have things you've never had before, you have to do things you've never done before. And that means stepping out of your comfort zone. Yes. And what's the worst they could say is no or just not answer. It's not like your world ends, right? Exactly. Exactly. And um, yeah, that's something that I've been trying to really get through to my kids. They're teenagers now. And since they were little, I'm like, always ask because again the answer is always no if you don't ask but yeah. if you ask it might be yes it might be no it might be maybe but at least you might get a yes <laughs> if it's something you yeah. want yeah yeah no it's and even like all of these other authors asked me the same question they're like how did you get these big endorsements it's like i asked and that just blew their minds it's yeah i don't know you're right it's a worthiness it's a worthiness thing or a fear thing and Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Fear is part of the illusion though, right? False it evidence is. appearing real. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So with, with things in your life, what's, what uh, would you say the biggest risk is that you've taken or stepping into a fear situation that then you're like, okay, that turned out. Okay. That turned out even better <laughs> than I thought. Yeah. I think, I think the, the one that comes to mind right away is I used to work in marketing in the tech industry and I, I loved my job. And then that company, the startup that I worked for ended, I was running the marketing department and I got a job at another company that was, it was a startup, but it was run by a, a corporation. So it was like way more corporate and I was just miserable. I was having panic attacks every night. And at the same time, I started taking yoga teacher training and I would have these amazing dreamy weekends where I would get to talk about chakras and all, try all types of yoga and pranayama and be with like-minded people. And it was amazing. And then this dreamy weekend would end and I would go back to my nine to five and it was just miserable. And on paper, everything was great about this job. I was making really good six figure income. It was a great commute. It was on the waterfront in Oakland. It was beautiful and I was just miserable. And my best friend's husband is a functional medicine doctor and he, I'm, I'm so lucky to have him because he tests me all the time and doesn't charge me for it. It's great. Yes. So um, he, he tested me because I was starting to get these other um, just kind of like illness things 
happening. And he found out that I had Hashimoto's, which is autoimmune thyroid. And to me, it was like the universe had been kind of like poking me with the panic attacks, like, hey, 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 you, you know, and I wasn't listening. And so it took me by the shoulders and kind of shook me for the with the Hashimoto's diagnosis. Yeah, And I was like, okay, I am not on the path I'm meant to be on. I am not like living my life purpose. This is not what I want to be doing. And I took this leap of faith and I quit my job halfway through teacher training. I was like, I want to be a yoga teacher. I want to help people. I want to serve, you know. And I ended up um, very quickly after teacher training getting uh, kind of groomed to be the, the manager of the studio. And then I became regional director. And then when that studio shut down during COVID, I opened my own yoga company. So I have, I have a yoga company as well. Okay. So that, that kind of put me on the path. And all these people were like, it's hard to be a yoga teacher. You know, you have to, you have to hustle, you have to market yourself. And it, it was, that wasn't the story at all for me. Cause I knew it wasn't going to be, I was like, that's not how it's going to go for me. It's going to be yeah. great. I'm going to be able to pay my man bills, you know? And, and so it worked out. I love that. Well, and you have a really great story about your dream house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one, too. So, yeah, share that story with our audience. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, a lot of what I teach is it, it's it's getting really clear on your vision, right? It's journaling mm -hmm. on your vision. It's getting really clear. And there's all these exercises I take my clients through and I take you through in the book to get clear. But then you have to take steps towards the life of your dreams, right? Because yeah. even if it's a small step, right, if you want to, you know, if you want to move to a new place, city like start researching jobs or housing there if you want to adopt or if you want a dog like start looking at shelters you know like don't underestimate the power of a small step because it sets the universe in motion right it yeah. creates this momentum yeah and so I knew that and and I I wanted to build my own house I wanted to build my the house of my dreams and you know it was, it was always a dream and I knew that I needed to take a step so I started looking at vacant lots and my husband and I just both love real estate. It's just fun for us. So we started looking at all of these vacant lots in our area. But I live in the Bay Area of California where prices are insane. Mm -hmm. And in order to build, we would have had to sell our house and use like everything to build. So we couldn't afford to spend a million dollars on a lot, right? It was, it was crazy. But, but I knew it was going to happen. So we kept, we kept looking at these properties. And then one day, uh, a family member called us up and asked if we wanted to get lunch. And we're like, yeah, totally. But we're going to go look at this property first. And they were like, Oh, could we come like, that would be fun. So we're like, Yeah, sure. So we all go and the property was fine. But, but uh, during it, they were like, you know, this is nothing compared to what we have. Like, why don't we just give you part of our property? Why don't we give you some of our acreage and you can build there? And we're like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. And they're like, no, seriously, like, come check it out. And I had been to their property before. So they have, they had about four acres that backed up to open space, like 300,000 acres of open space with trails. Okay. And part of my dream is I love animals. I've been a horseback rider since I was six and I want, I wanted cows and donkeys and horses. And, <laughs> So they, they had a branch, they had horses there and their neighbors had like goats and chickens and stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I couldn't picture in my head what part of their property they were referring to. So we went there and they showed us and it was so perfect. And it was, it was like everything I had journaled, right? It was like the rolling green hills and the acreage and it was beautiful. There were all these beautiful old trees near like where the plot could go. And it just ended up falling into our laps and we're building right now. Actually, we're still building, but yeah, we, it took a long time to get the subdivision approval and the permits and everything. But what was cool. Oh, this was the coolest part is to get subdivision approval. We had to work with an architect and have the whole plan drawn up mm. and which is kind of crazy. Cause they could have said, no, we could have spent all this money. Right. But, and we had yeah. to work with like a civil engineer and cause yeah. So we were working with this architect and my husband and I, we got to literally see our dream life come into fruition, right? We got to mm -hmm. see where the kitchen would be and where like all like the whole layout and even like start to look at like fixtures we would want and the style and like the, the kind of roof and like things I wouldn't have even thought of. And 
then he created like a 3D rendering and it, it was just, it became more and more real. Mm-hmm. And without even trying to, Shane, my husband and I started talking about it. Like it was our dream house. Like we started talking, we started calling it the new house and we would go over there all the time and be like, okay, we, we would like have our little measuring tapes and be like, okay, here's where it would lay on the plot. And this is where the kitchen window would be. And this is the view we'll have for coffee. And that's where our future children are going to play. And like, we were just willing it into being, and it was just fun. We were just having fun with it. And, and now it's on its way to becoming a reality. So that was a, that was a good one. Yeah. Well, I love that because yeah. I mean, number one, I, I've had moments in my life with that kind of thing of like, okay, mm-hmm like moving to here to Hawaii from Washington state, you know, in the middle of COVID, we, it just kind of came out of the blue that it was an idea. And then, like you said, like my husband and I, we watched all 13 seasons of Hawaii life. You know, we're, we, I started seeing signs all over bumper stickers of Hawaii all around Olympia, Washington, which was weird, but it's like taking just even the step, even the dream of looking at the real estate. Yep. And, you know, six months later, we bought a house here, sight unseen. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. So, and the other, what, the other story I would love for you to share, and this does not, by the way, give away the whole book because you have so <laughs> much this in the book, but um, I love the story of how you actually met your husband and the qualities and all that, because actually I wrote a book, Sacred Soul Love, where that's one of the, the things, it's a coaching kind of book, but that's one of the things that I did was I wrote the list of all the qualities after two toxic marriages. I'm like, okay, number one, deep healing here. So I don't recreate that. You're like, I know what I don't want now. <laughs> yeah. So like, okay, what do I want? So I made that list. And when, after I met my, my, now current husband, the love of my life, I realized, I I pulled the list out like a year later and realized he was every single one of those qualities. So I want to share your story. My story is the exact same. I love it. Uh, (laughs) No, it was the same thing. I had, um, I had moved out to the Bay with an ex. We were together for like four years and we broke up and I just made this list in the notes app on my phone of every quality I wanted in my dream guy. And it was big things like honesty and loyalty to little things like, you know, loves the same kind of music or an animal lover, whatever. Yeah. And I read it. I read it all the time, like at least three times a day. And I was adding to it all the time because it was on my person. And two weeks later, I joined Match.com. And I cannot tell you why I joined Match.com. This was before like Tinder and Hinge and the dating apps. And I had no ever desire to join a dating app. And I swear it was like something moving through me, right? It was like a higher purpose. And I, so back in the day on Match, you had to fill out your profile fill out what you were looking for. And then it would tease you with your top three matches. And you would see like a little paragraph about them in one picture. And the top guy on there was this cute guy named Shane. And I was like, all right, well, if there's guys like that on there, I'll pay the 30 bucks or whatever. And I messaged him and he was the only guy I talked to on there. And we met up two weeks later and he was everything on the list and the rest is history. It's, it, yeah, he's still everything on the list. It's amazing. And to this day, it just feels so surreal that I, I like I still wake up and I'm like, is this true? Like, I met this guy and he's just so perfect for me in every way. It just it blows my mind, like to this day. Yeah. yeah well, and I, I wanted to bring that up because I know a lot of my listeners, even like they are my age, I'm 50 or even older and they're single and Some of them are like, am I ever going to find the love of my life? And you're never too old, first of all. I mean, I know people getting married in their 80s. My grandfather married his third wife in his 80s. I love that so much. That's really cool. (laughs) So, you know, it can happen anytime. But just I want to give people who, who are ready to find that relationship, like inspiration and hope that it is possible. And the more clear that you are on what you want and you really focus on that, that is going to be able to come into your space. Yeah. And it's, it's that, and it's exactly what we were just talking about. Take that step. For me, it was joining a dating app. Maybe it's saying yes when you're invited out to a social gathering or whatever it is, you know, put yourself out there, take the steps. And, and also, 
like one thing I've noticed, and I write about this case study in my book is people will be doing all the right things on paper, right? They're, they're, they're clear on their vision. They're taking the step, they're doing the thing, but then they're complaining to a friend or to me, they're like, Oh, it, it always goes this way where the guy ghosts me, or it's never going to happen for me. And it's like, you can't have energy and momentum coming in one direction and then have energy and momentum going the other. Like all that's going to happen is nothing. Right. So you have to fully be invested in this, like talk yourself into it if you have to. Yes. And work with a coach yeah, for that. Mindset. Coach. Exactly. <laughs> yes. yes. Work with a coach. Yeah. Well, okay. So what other ways have you used all of this information in your life that has really like made huge transformations for you? And when so some of your most massive aha moments. Yeah. I mean, I've shared a lot of them. You know, I've, I have a journaling technique that I use that has gotten me every job I've ever wanted, every salary down to the exact penny. I could share a kind of funny story. So the last time I ever worked for someone was at that yoga company. And I, I, I was about to get on the phone with my about to be boss. And I was all ready to like negotiate my salary. I had journaled my journaling technique that's never failed me. I knew exactly what I was going to go for. I knew what I was going to make. Mm -hmm. And so we get on the phone and before I can even say anything, he's like, this is how much you're making. It's how much the person you replaced made. It's how much all the managers you make or all the managers make. Like, this is it. And he left like zero room for negotiation. (laughs) And he was like kind of intimidating. And I was like, all right, like I really wanted the job. You know, I was, I was leaving Mm -hmm. my career. I was like, okay, I'm starting at the bottom again. That's fine. I'll just take it. And it was $10,000 less than I had journaled. And I was like, this is so weird that my manifesting hadn't worked for once. I didn't think much of it, though. I I just got to work. And then two weeks later, he called me out of the blue. And he told me, you're the best hire I've ever made. I'm raising your salary. And he raised it by $10,000, like to the exact number that I had journaled. So it still worked. It just there was like that two week delay for whatever reason. Okay. Um, And little things like that. So in that two weeks... What was your mindset about it? Like, because I think some people, like you said, like, oh, it didn't work this time. What's going on? And they might stay maybe in that self-doubt or, Mm. but so I'm curious. Yeah. What was the two weeks like for you? I love that question. I think I was just really having fun. I had left my tech career. I had taken that leap of faith. I was still able to pay my bills with it. I was just, I was just enjoying. And I think I was just in that state of joy and gratitude for having it. There wasn't any self doubt. There wasn't anything. Yeah. What a great question. I've never actually thought about that. And that's, that's such an important component of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and what I love about that is, you know, so when I left Olympia and moved here to Hawaii, kind of same thing, like, um, my income hasn't been the same that it was in Olympia because I was running my other company too. And, but I'm having way more fun and I'm so grateful every day when I wake up. And so I am paying the bills, things are coming in and things are growing and I know it's just going to get bigger and better. And so be coming from that place of like, okay, I'm following my passion I'm living in joy. I'm having fun. I'm playing. um, And life is beautiful. (laughs) <laughs> that's all you need yeah because we create the reality that we want right like we I just made a video this morning too about like quantum jumping right like you choose your timeline that you're gonna you're gonna go on to right so you know if you stay in that mindset you're gonna get all the things that you want right it's, it's not even a question right it's already happened Yeah, it is. And it's like every possibility exists out there in the quantum realm. It's just waiting for you to choose it. And you've chosen it and you're on that trajectory now. So yeah, yeah. why would there be a doubt in your mind? And that's the thing. It's like life is fun. It's a game. I like to think of it like you've been dropped into this video game world, right? You choose your avatar, like you choose what you look like, who your parents are, where you're going to be born to, because those are going to help set up the best life circumstances where you get to learn the lessons you're meant to learn. Right. And then you get to, you get to create your optimal health, your dream career. And when you, when you look at it this way, it's fun, right? It's, it's, I don't know, people take it so seriously, but it's, um, 
you can really have fun with it because you do create your own reality. Yes. And I, I mean, that is something that I have been understanding since I, well, I told you before we got on since I was 13 and I have been playing with that. And I've had, of course, moments that have been way harder than other moments, but I know those were lessons that I came to learn and to grow and, um, and forgive myself and others for that experience, the experiences. And, but, you know, my, the group that I primarily work with in the ET world, the Arcturians, um, and I did learn this back in my spiritual school as well, that all timelines exist simultaneously. We know that at the quantum level, quantum mechanics has that as one of the premises. And we do get to choose which timeline we want to be a part of. And so you, even if the world, some people are experiencing the world being horrible right now. Well, I'm in a happy little bubble here in Hawaii and my world is not horrible. And so. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because all possible realities exist and you Mm -hmm. get to choose the one that you want. So the more you focus on the reality you want, the more the, reality handed to you by default starts to fade away right yeah. you all like you said before you always have a choice you always have a choice yeah. with everything yes it's all up and to you and so you're um reading your book and just having this conversation with you 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 helped remind me of things that i know and that i sometimes i get out of practice of especially like the gratitude journaling and yeah. and all of that but one of my dreams right now, kind of like yours, is to buy property, a big property, and build a retreat kind of center on it. Wow. And so over the last couple of weeks, I've started looking at real estate so I can plug that into my mind. And nice. I don't know how it's going to happen. I just know it's already happened, right? Yeah. yeah. And- I love that. And no, I love what you just said, though. Sorry to cut you off, but I just got so excited because you you just nailed it. You're like, I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. And that's the mm-hmm. other piece of this, right? You get yeah. clear on your vision, you take steps, and then you just like let go of the how because the how isn't up to you. And it's going to come in ways that surprise you, right? The universe knows how to deliver things in a way that you couldn't possibly fathom. Yes. So, you know, as humans, we're like, this needs to happen, then this, then this, or like, you know, but the universe will move mountains or put doors in front of you that didn't exist and then open them, you know? So yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited for you. That's really, really exciting. Yes. Well, and so what's interesting. So my husband though, he's one, he's a Taurus, very grounded. And he's also a one three in his human design profile, which means he needs a steady foundation. He, um, I, I have, I keep trying to remind him, just know it. It's already happened, babe. Don't worry. Cause he is one of those. Well, I, we need to know how the money's coming and all that. I'm like, no, we don't Yep. No, It's just already done. And we're just going to take the steps. We're going to keep just moving forward. Yeah. I so. love that. My, my husband's the same way actually. And I've gotten him, I got, I have him journaling and like reading it every night and doing meditations with me. And things are starting to happen or have been happening in his life. And he's like, holy shit, this works. I feel like I have magic powers. And I'm like, yeah, it does. But then every once in a while, he'll slip back like that. You know, it's like, oh, we got to figure out this money situation. It's like, no, we don't. Like, it's going to figure out itself. Yeah. So I just, I want, yeah, your story and my story to hopefully, again, be an inspiration for people to dream bigger, know that there's so much more out there that you can have in your life. And it's not, you know, having that house of your dreams is not not being spiritual. It's actually taking control of your reality. Right? Totally. Yeah, we can have whatever we want. And it's, it's not taking away from someone else either. Totally. Yeah. And you know, yeah, people are always like, Oh, I don't want to be greedy. But it's like, we're here to have human experiences. Like, and part of that is, is creating our reality. We are here, I believe we're here to learn how to use the law of attraction. Because as we incarnate again into higher dimensions, that becomes instantaneous. Yes. You know, and again, people's, 90% of people's thoughts are negative and repetitive. So you don't want to be thinking something negative and have it immediately manifest into your life. So we're here. That's why time exists, right? So there's that buffer mm-hmm. while we're learning. So, you know, use it, <laughs> use it, have, enjoy your human experience. Um, 
And, you know, that's the thing with people always come to me asking how to manifest money. That's a big one, right? Everyone wants relationships, health, and money. Yes. And, you know, it's all about your mindset, right? We all have a money story. Um, You know, maybe we were told money doesn't grow on trees when we were a kid, or maybe we were told, uh, or we had a, we had money and we were embarrassed because our friends didn't. But I don't know if you remember um, months ago when that submersible was looking for the Titanic wreckage Yeah, over the summer. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't know. So every news outlet posted about that on social media. And I don't know if you read the comments, but they were awful. It was like, Mm -hmm. eat the rich they're they're rich they deserve it like whatever they're just like these like millionaires and it's like do you think the people writing those comments are going to manifest money and wealth and abundance into their life no no because they have that mindset that story around it right so it's all about changing your story I don't even know how I got on that tangent but (laughs) something you know I I, it's it's a really good example of mindset really I mean it plays into everything that is creating this life. So, yeah. yeah. So if people want more money, okay, what's your story about the money? Do you judge the people with the money? Because if you judge it, it's, yeah, it won't come to you because then you'll judge yourself. Yeah. Money doesn't want to go where it's not really welcomed and it's not going to stay where it's not valued. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so one of the things that um, you also had written about in your book that I just, so I do past life regression therapy is one of my modalities. And I know you've had a couple of QHHT sessions done. Yeah. And so I'm wondering, I just, cause I've had a few people on, including Sarah Bresman, Cos- Bresman Cosme, who endorsed your book. Yeah, she, endorsed my book. Cool. she was one of my um, guests that I had on. And so I would love to know what your experience was and what your, like what the higher self shared with you, if you want to. Oh my gosh, there's so much there. I love that you brought up QHHT because I could talk about Dolores Cannon and QHHT all day. I, I love Dolores Cannon's work. <laughs> yeah, too. yeah, Between Death and Life is my favorite of hers and it's just oh, it's so good. Um, also, I'm, I don't know why it got dark in here. I have my ring light like right on me, but hopefully you can see me okay. Um, so I have had two QHHT sessions and they were both amazing and life-changing. That's so cool that you do it. Uh, so... I have a story. I actually have an interesting story for like the doubters, for the people who think it's BS. I can start with that. So as you know, and maybe your listeners know, but just in case they don't. So every QHHT session, the practitioner will take you through two different past lives. And they're always very related to what's going on in your life now. And then they ask your personality to recede and what Dolores called your subconscious to come to the surface. I call it the higher self. I think Dolores just didn't know what to call it. So she called it that. Yeah, I also uh, yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's this all-knowing entity, right? Mm-hmm. It's all-knowing being. Um, and so I had asked my practitioner to do a body scan, to have my higher self do a body scan on me. And during the body scan, the my higher self, under hypnosis, I was saying that I had a lump on my left breast. And, you know, the, the practitioner was like, asking like, should I be worried about this? And it was like, no, no, no. As long as you don't get too caught up in earthly emotions, you're fine. Like, don't worry about it. You know, it's, it's fine. And this is like nothing I had ever thought of before. I hadn't felt anything like that. Like this was totally under hypnosis. And so after the session, you know, I'm, I called Shane and I was so excited to tell him about all these past life experiences. Cause it just, it was, this, it was just an awesome session And at the end, I was kind of like, oh, yeah. And apparently, I have, like, a lump on my left breast. And I didn't take it seriously. And he was like, what? (laughs) He was like, you have to make a doctor's appointment right now. Like, you can't take that stuff lightly. Like, that's early detection is everything. Like, he was freaking out. So uh, to just appease him, I made an appointment. at. We have Kaiser here. So it's like they do everything. I, I made an appointment to get a breast exam. And I'm there and the doctor's like, okay, I don't feel a lump, but I feel like hard tissue. Like it's different in this place. And I'm like, oh shit, like this is, this is real. She's like, okay, I'm going to send you up to get a mammogram. And then next week you're going to get an ultrasound. And it's like right now, she's like, yeah, go upstairs right now before they leave. And so the mammogram didn't show anything because they said I had dense tissue. (laughs) Um, But then at the ultrasound, 
you know, it's like a, it's not the doctor that's doing it. It's like some, some like nurse and so they can't tell you what's going on, but I'm like watching her and see this dark spot on the screen and she's like circling it. And I'm like, Oh man, this is, this is kind of nuts. And anyway, so the doctor comes in and he's like, okay, so you have fiber cystic tissue here that grew into a mass and it's benign. There's nothing to worry about, but like, we need you to come back every six months and get it checked out to make sure it stays that way. But it was, it was just wild. And it was in the exact spot that I had like felt this tingling during the session. And so, so if you're listening and you're like, that's total BS, probably none of your listeners think that because they're listening to you for a reason, but that was the coolest where it was like, okay, this is, this is real. Right. Right. Um, the doctor's like, how did you find it? I'm like hypnosis. And she's like, I've never heard that before. <laughs> right. Um, so that was really cool. But yeah, I had, I had four different past lives I was taken to and it just, it totally changed everything. It was such a mind changer. And I, I cured my headaches through QHHT. I used to get chronic headaches and yeah, I mean, I can talk about the past lives if you want, but. Well, we're running out of time, but I maybe I can have you back on in the future. <laughs> I'd love to come back on. Yeah. 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 No, I love it. Um, so just, I guess, to wrap up any final words of wisdom you want to share with the audience and then um, how people can find you. Yeah, totally. I always kind of like to, whenever people ask me that, my answer is always the same. It's we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all reflections of each other. We're all connected. We're all, we're all parts of the same. We come from the same thing. We go back to the same thing and people outside of you may look separate, but that's part of the illusion. And again, quantum physics backs this up with entanglement. Yeah. So what you do on one side of the planet deeply affects all of humanity and people on the other side of the globe. Right. So this is why things like cancel culture are so harmful, right? Because when you make someone feel angry or guilt or shame or humiliation, you're sending that out into the quantum field. Mm -hmm. And the quantum field sends all of humanity those same types of emotions. So the way, you, the way you heal the outside world is by healing yourself, right? Becoming that beacon, rising up, affecting everyone in your circle, giving them that lifting hand up, and then they affect their circles. And Rising tides lift all ships. This is how we heal the world. Heal yourself. Your inner world will, will reflect your outer world. So yeah. that's my last piece of wisdom. And then to find me, I'm at Change Your Mind with Chris, Chris with a K. I'm on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. You can buy my book, Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality. It's in paperback, audiobook, ebook, everywhere you buy your books. So. Thank you so much for letting me, letting me give a little plug there at the end. Of course. Well, and thank you for being such a bright light in the world and sharing your wisdom. And um, yeah, we need more of us here in the world. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for what you do. It's so important. So thank you. you a lot. For those watching or listening, thank you so much for your time. And I'll see you next time on Connection to the Cosmos. Aloha.